Did you ever want to just sit down with your pastor and ask them several questions about the Bible and your faith journey, but hesitated? On today's program, we'll feature a pastor couple who are very active in several ministries. They will share their journey and discuss their book, Ask the Pastor. It's their heart's desire that the book will increase faith and encourage a personal relationship with the Lord. The book addresses some critical questions. Who knows? Maybe a question you have will be answered on today's program. Stay tuned. Hi friends, welcome to the Everlasting Love Program. I'm your host, Barbara Karpuzian, and I'm so glad that you decided to join us. Just as the title of our program says, Everlasting Love, we want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. You know, the scriptures say that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that son is Jesus Christ, and that he came into this world, and whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It doesn't matter uh, what walk of life you've come from, what experiences you've had, maybe you think you're a bad person, you know, all of us have made mistakes in our lives. None of us are perfect, but God loves us so much that he is willing to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's made a way for us, and I hope that you'll open up your heart to him um, so that uh, you can get to know him. You know, during the course of the program, you'll see some information pop up on our screen. Uh, we have a Facebook page, a YouTube channel, We'd love for you to get to know a little bit more about us, and perhaps um, we can get to know a little bit more about you. Feel free to contact us um, if you have a prayer request, if you're looking for a good church, and uh, we'll get back with you. Um, I'm excited to do our program today. We have a really unique pastor couple on our program, um, the Duchalises. I love that name. Um, you know, Scripture tells us that we should always have a reason for the hope that lies within us, um, that we should study to show ourselves approved, which means that we should open up the Bible and get to know what it says. If you wanted to become a doctor, you would have to go through the right process to become a doctor and uh, learn uh, what that means and study uh, any profession, actually, if you think about it, um, you would have to prepare. And so as somebody who calls himself a Christian, I really need to know what's in that book. And so without further ado, I want to introduce the pastors that are on our show with us today. Um, Pastor Roscoe and Renita, welcome to the program. Thank yes, you. hi. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, yeah, I said Renita. Revita. Revita. I want to make sure I get that right. Beautiful <laughs> name, too. I love <laughs> that name. Um, they're pastors, chaplains. Uh, involved in different kinds of ministries, do radio ministry, um, and um, Pastor Roscoe has written a book called Ask the Pastor. You know, at the beginning of the program, um, uh, we, we talked about like how exciting it would be if you could sit down and actually ask a pastor questions. Like if you had all these questions and you had time and you could just ask a pastor a question, wouldn't you love to do that? And so here, uh, one of the resources for you that you'll probably see come up on the screen is Ask the Pastor 100 Questions and Answers plus 20 bonus questions and answers. <laughs> and uh, Pastor also responds to gotquestions.org. If you've ever Googled, um, some folks have Googled questions or Googled a topic, and you'll see gotquestions.org come up, and Pastor has actually contributed um, answers to those questions. So welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. 
So I've done all that talking now. <laughs> it's, it, you guys are going to take it away. Um, I'd love to hear um, a little bit of your own stories, your own okay. personal God story, and, and then perhaps how God brought the two of you together. Okay. So, Ravita, can we start with you? Okay. Um, that'll be fine. That'll be <laughs> fine. Um, I grew up in a household that believed in God and believed in Christ. And so I did what most people do. I got the baptized, I went to Sunday school, I did all that. Then came the age when many people start to fall away, the mm -hmm. teen, late teens, 16, 18, mm -hmm. where I chose to do my own thing in a variety of different ways, never gave up on God, but pretty much put it in that God would do pretty much what I wanted to do. So it was okay to have God, but I still do whatever I wanted to do. And I lived that life for a few years. I and went to various different types of traditions and things to try, as long as God was still there, that I was being faithful. But there came a day when, after my youngest sister, my younger sister died from uh, brain cancer at mm. age 19. Mm. And when that time came, it really had me look at okay, I think I'm doing the right stuff, but am I really honoring God? Because mm. I had pretty much, as long as I did it and asked God, okay, I could do whatever I want to. But at that time, it really put me in a searching that, okay, here it was, she lived a, a lovely life, but she died early at 19. Mm. And it's like, where do I really think my focus is? Yes. And so at that time, I did the shortest um, prayer to get back to God, which is, I give up. I gave mm. a complete surrender. That's mm. just what I said in front of a kitchen window. I give up. I gave up control of my life and decided to let Jesus Christ be the guide of my life. My life has been completely different since that moment that when that date of full surrender, when I fully decided that that's where it'd be. Mm. And having God to lead my life has made major changes, including the meeting and marrying of my husband, all of that under God, which made li makes life so, so, there's so much to life. I, I like to tell people that since I truly surrendered my life, that the lows have never gotten as low as they were when I was in control. And the highs are bigger and higher than any high I could imagine. Mm. Um, the, the joys, you know, and so, um, so therein, yeah. um, I'll let uh, my husband talk before I share about the story of how we got yeah. together, but that's what put me on uh, this journey. And when that happened, when I fully surrendered, I fully surrendered everything. Mm -hmm. So if I was going back to school, it was going to be under God. Mm -hmm. Whatever I was doing, I fully surrendered. It was like, okay, I had had control for a good amount of time um, up until my 30s. And so I was like, no, now it is time, for, it is time that I'm truly surrendering everything to God. And so everything, my career, my husband, everything has been under God mm. since that day. Uh, mm. Full with its unique challenges, but God has always been there to carry yes. through. Yes, yes. Well, Ravita, you say something so powerful, mm -hmm. right? Um, that you surrendered. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if folks out there really understand when somebody says, oh, I'm born again, or I have a personal mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus. Um, know what that really means but you you said when you surrendered your life was never the same mm -hmm. so there's like some kind of you know divine supernatural transaction that, that took place that, that day yeah, that took place that day because as I said I lived life never giving up on God but I made God into my own my own workings mm -hmm. but it was on that particular day that I decided that okay it really I, you know, I was honest with myself is that I'm making who God should be and really not allowing God to be who God mm. is. Um, I had always had an amazing faith for God, but I still just wanted to do my own thing. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, but then it was like, okay, doing my own thing. Uh, it's not working. Is, yeah, it was mm -hmm. done not, it's not working. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't giving that peace and that comfort because I was doing it. Yes. And God was gracious enough to allow me to make my mistakes and travel in different words. And I think he was um, like in the movie Aladdin, we're waiting as soon as I was ready. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you done now? Okay, I'm done now. Okay, I'm done now. I'm, I'm ready to truly, truly follow you. And I mean, following, me, following God meant following his word. Yes. I mean, I had really, I'd read a Bible, but not really reading it to understand it, mm. to live the life that I believed in following Jesus mm. Christ. I wasn't doing that before. Yes. And that's what happened afterwards. Yeah, beautiful. I yeah. love that. 
Yeah, we want God to be in control, yes. not yes. ourselves, right? Amen. In all of our ways, acknowledge Him right. and He'll direct yeah. our That's paths, right? right? Amen. So, Pastor Roscoe, what about you? Well, <laughs> my journey, um, I grew up in a loving family following the teachings of the Jehovah Witnesses. Mm. And um, as I got older, I started seeing problems with that religion. I think God was working on me shaping me and steering me in the, the path that I was supposed to be on. So I, I dove in and I was reading their books and, and then I wasn't getting my questions answered. Okay. And, um, and I started thinking, there's, some, there's something wrong here. So over time, I started looking, researching, asking other people questions and then I started seeing there was false predictions in the history and all these negative things. Um, and I wasn't getting reasons why you couldn't celebrate birthdays. It was uh, because somebody, because John the Baptist's head was cut off on that day, so you don't oh, celebrate birthdays, okay, okay. which didn't line up in my thinking, like, okay, if somebody uses mm -hmm. an instrument and kills someone, like a, a knife, do you not use knives to cut your steak? Mm -hmm. So all, all those thoughts came to my mind at the time, and it's like, it's not adding up. And so God was leading me in a direction, mm -hmm. and I didn't know when I first started on that journey that God was actually leading me um, more towards true religion, which is Christianity, versus the Jehovah's Witness, which they mm -hmm. think is true religion. So, um, as my journey continued on, and this is before we met, I was dating a, a young woman, and my search got me to a point where um, I learned so much. And I started feeling like God is leading me towards the pastorate. So, uh, I'm going to skip some sections mm -hmm. of my, my story to, to shorten it, but I was working at a medical device company, and then God started affirming the fact that He wanted me to be a pastor in my journey there and outside mm. of there. Um, people would come to me with their, their problems and their stories, and, and then someone would come up and say, you like the company pastor. Mm. I would, they gave you the title. <laughs> yeah. And then dating, I would go and on the west side with the person I was dating at the time and would be praying with people and, and mm -hmm. led a guy to Christ in the back seat of the car. And then we ended up going to a church. I don't know if it's still around, but it was a, a, a Clifford E. Turner had a church mm -hmm. uh, where he had a TV program called The Awakening. Mm. And so I, I tried out for that. And then... Um, I ended up going back to his church for a service with this young lady that I was dating at the time. Clifford Eternal looked at me, stopped the service, and said, wait a minute, hold on a minute. I want to get my man over there to come up here. I turned around thinking he's maybe <laughs> talking about somebody else. He goes, why are you looking around? I, you know I'm talking to you. Come up here, I want to talk to you. I'm in the middle of the service. <laughs> it's like, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lord. <laughs> so I get up and I go to the front, and he goes, do you know you were called to preach? It was like powerful there, right there. I mean, uh, I used to get really frightened speaking in front of people. And, and it's like I'm getting all these affirmations <laughs> on being a pastor. Sort of and like Moses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, yes, my uncle mentioned this to me two weeks ago on the phone. <laughs> and he goes, well, why aren't you doing it? And I go, at the time, I, I owned a dating service. I was matching Christian, Christians oh, up. Oh, okay. And, um, <laughs> and I said, well, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I have a Christian dating service. Well, do that too. But you know, he wanted to make sure I knew that God's was hand was in this. And so I kept that word mm. in me. I left there, and I said, I got to get busy. So what I did was I put a chair in the living room. That was the God seat. And I sat down in a chair, and I'm sitting in my living room, and I'm saying, so, Lord, you want me to preach. You're calling me to preach? I don't know what to do. Where is all this information going to come from? And then I heard within a prompting, I put it in you. Mm. And I was like, whoa. Okay, so if you put it in me, um, what am I going to preach about? And, you know, God is humorous. I mm -hmm. felt in me it said, write a sermon on doing what you're told. So I did. I, I grabbed a paper, I started writing, and I kept writing, and I kept writing, and I was able to make a sermon, and it just taught me that I could do it, because mm. I didn't have the confidence that I was going to be able to do Look it. Look at that. You know? Mm -hmm. Look at our God. Right? <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. So then I ended up um, getting a digital recorder and recording it, and um, so that was my first sermon. And um, so after that, I said, I got to get serious. I got to get to school. 
But before school happened, um, I said, well, if I'm going to do this, I really would really I would like to have a loving wife on my side because, you know, I don't want to have opportunities of sin, you know, by, mm -hmm. you know, while I'm a dating Some man. Some wisdom going yeah. on here. Okay. <laughs> so, so that was one of my prayers, okay? And so then eventually Ravina and I started to date. Um, and then... I know I skipped over some things. That's okay. Um, but <laughs> this I, is like your next book, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this one thing that I said between God, the God and myself, that the woman that I would marry is going to know this four-syllable word. It was Rumpelstiltskin. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Nobody was even talking about that word. It was not. <laughs> the car movie it, hadn't come out. It's you know, been gone then, for you years. Know, it's been gone yeah. for years. And I chose that as my password. So I said, okay, <laughs> Lord. Woman? Like you put out a fleece. Yeah, yes, exactly. Oh, wow. Um, and it I, was skin. <laughs> a force oh for the Lord. Lord. I figured no one would guess that. So let me use that, you know. And I have never heard <laughs> this before. Is this so, on your dating website? <laughs> I, I didn't put it. But, but um, I had that secret password between me and God, and we were dating. And one day, the, the subject of marriage came up. And I said, well, the person I'm going to marry, marry knows the password. And so I started taunting her because <laughs> right. I was—I didn't yeah, think she, she was would like, know. You don't get it. So I said, "So, so, what's the password?" And say your part. Okay. And so, unbeknownst to him, when he first asked, when and he I first was said my this, yes, thinking she wouldn't know. That was the first word that came, and I crossed my head like that is too <laughs> silly. No one would choose that as a password. And I wanted to make so it I'm difficult. So I'm not going to say that because that's just too silly. Why would someone choose? That is a password. That's the first word that came to me. <laughs> so I didn't say that. <clears throat> and um, so it says he would taught me about, okay, a password. And then one day he asked, and I'm like, okay, then I threw it out. He's like, I said it. And he looked at me and like, what? It went down to my feet. And I'm like, all, all the, and the emotions and wow. the feelings and he said, went through my body. He said, that said was it. the password. I'm like, you're kidding. I'm like, that's the first thing I thought when you asked it. And I thought that was too silly. I'm not going <laughs> to even mention that. Because wow. that is just too silly. Like, who would pick something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Like, that can't be it. <laughs> the man <laughs> you're about to be. Exactly. Right. The rascal. <laughs> right. So, but that was just letting us know truly that God was yes. in it and was in it from the um, beginning. Yeah. Because that was like, you're kidding. That's really it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so yes. Then, so then we started that journey and found out that, you know, in our dating and all, found that we both had a strong passion for being in ministry. Yeah. And, and uh, serving God in, in that way. Hmm. And so um, I enrolled in school. She enrolled in school. We both got our master's. And. And, um, but we were still doing ministry at the time. We formed Lord of Hope Ministries to, prior to getting mm -hmm. our master's. Lord of Hope is mm -hmm. the name of your ministry. That's right. Yes. I love that, Lord of Hope. He's the God of yes. Hope. And, yes. And, and we, we formed that in 2002. And at that time, <clears throat> we really wanted to build it up as a resource ministry. Now you have to think of the timing now. That is before everybody decided to put ministry internet in that. We were mm. early in that. It wasn't a whole now, lot of video. Yeah, and now audio that is now that is at that time. Sure, yeah, very common. Sure. But you're talking yeah. at that time, it was very it was still fresh and new that yeah. people were actually doing those kind of things. Now okay. it's right, all over right, yet. right. And I have an IT background. So my we're okay. bivocational pastors, so I work as an IT professional. And what happened was I started using some of my IT talent with our ministry, programming the websites and, and, and all that. And um, what happened was we had audio, we had video at the time. I kind of tailed it off the video over the years because I got too busy. Yeah. But um, we started building up our ministry and it was starting to gain notice. And then we said, okay, it is a resource ministry. There are ministries contacting us, wanting us to, to help them. So we prayed and prayed and prayed and we didn't get a whole lot of resources to help people with money. But we ended, we ended up taking in, I think, three or four different ministries overseas. One was in India, mm. Nigeria, Kenya. Um, um, and what happened was, um, over time, they started requesting money. So we were helping them mm. out of our own pocket. And, and occasionally somebody would give and we would give them. And um, um, over time, we realized if God was really in this, us leading them, he would continue to bring resources. And mm -hmm. so since the resource well seemed to dry up, we decided God must not be in this. Mm. So we ended up closing that, that option. Um, we, we left the people in a good way and um, decided we're going to do radio. 
because that's what I feel God was leading us. Mm. So we did radio and started writing some booklets and, and I became more of a guest pastor. Okay. So I would um, travel to different places when they mm -hmm. need a pastor to mm -hmm. give the pastor a break and that option still exists yeah. um, that I, I do that. Um, so our ministry actually turned from leading three or four ministries overseas to more internal. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time frame, Ravita was leading a woman's ministry called Shem Woman, uh, where she was uh, leading um, other ministers, ministers who were ladies in, mm -hmm. in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think she just, she just shut that down um, a couple months ago. Just recently, but yeah. Just recently, mm -hmm. but it had a long run from 2006. Yes. To, mm. to recent. Wow. Yeah, and there's seasons season. for things, yes. right? Yes, that's there what we're seasons. finding out. Yes. Yeah. And so um, what happened was, accord, according to the, along the way, uh, other pastors were becoming my friends. And uh, Dr. Woodrow Crow of uh, Back to the Bible before he retired, mm -hmm. we went out there to see him record his radio program, TV program, so it was very educational. And um, I asked him to be my mentor because we were in the radio and he agreed and we became mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also part of his board now. Um, he started a new ministry when he retired, mm -hmm. uh, which were Crow Ministries, the Psalm 119 mm -hmm. Association. And in that ministry, it's really powerful. A lot of his teaching is going in a device that's a solar, solar device, mm. so that people in, in indigenous areas can actually get Bible trained. In indigenous areas. In, sorry, wow. that is indigenous no, no, areas. No, 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 I just wanted yeah, to clarify it. Because it's solar power. In case somebody didn't that. hear it, I Thank wanted you. to repeat it. I appreciate that. Yeah, wow. And, and so it's a solar unit with a lot of his teaching and his Awesome. Yeah, so you don't that's have to worry awesome. about batteries or anything as long as you've got that, sun yeah, power. The sun. That's and the amazing thing mm -hmm. about Christianity because yeah. God so loved the world, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And it's not like, well, not it's just only in one language, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and we're doing it in multiple it's languages. It's like multiple languages because <coughs> people will say, oh, well, things get lost in translation, whether it's mm -hmm. a biblical <coughs> translation or a language. Tra and mm -hmm. it's like, no. no because you can go to that part of the world or exactly. this part of the world and people have the same message. Exactly. You know, whether it's a the or a the or mm -hmm. a you or whatever, oh, right? Yeah. And wow. And so, so God was bringing different ministers to, to rally around me and it, I went through a period of time when it was just me and then God brought, she was praying for me and God brought a lot of godly men into my world. Yes. And it, it really shaped me like Huntley Brown. Yes. Uh, his good brother. Fabulous. Oh yeah. yeah. And, um, um, I can go right, right off a list of people. Um, I attend, we attended at the time Willow Creek Community yes, Church. Yes, yes. And um, Bill Hybels was mentoring me at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I was playing in their bands and, and serving and doing a, a lot of things through that ministry and learning as I'm going along. But mm -hmm. we also had our independent ministry called Lord of Hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a full board, I still do. And we started forming other ministries within that, like a prayer ministry mm -hmm. and all these others. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, over the course of time, like you said, ministry has a season. Yeah. I started noticing some things that can't keep up, and we don't have the resources to do yes. that. So then we started to shift towards radio. Yeah. And and doing radio, we notice. Um, I noticed with me, I I started growing more spiritually. Yes. Because you, now you're doing a whole lot of work right. to fit in a 30-minute program. Yes. yes. And 28.5 <laughs> and yeah. minutes. And um, and you have to be prepared yes, for that. Yes. And, and then the guest pastoring picked up and then it, cut, it slowed down again. Um, so it was growing me as a person. Mm. And then um, I decided along during that journey that God has instilled in me the ability to answer questions. Mm. I found GodQuestions.org mm -hmm. and found out that they started the same year we started Lord of Hope in hmm, 2002. Look at that. <laughs> became look friends. At that. And both of us were writers at the time. She, she had to stop because she's doing another master's program. Yes, yes. And um, became a writer. And man, that really grew me. Because I was doing what I thrived in doing. Yeah. You know, looking up answers for people, writing yeah, it up, and yeah. crafting it together and, yeah. and sending it to them. And a lot of those questions are in the new book. Yeah. And we got questions. Which I want to reference again. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, we're now kind of segueing mm -hmm. into that. Um, so uh, Pastor Roscoe's written a book called Ask the Pastor, 100 Questions and Answers plus 20 Bonus Questions and Answers. And this is volume one, so who There's knows how many volumes <laughs> there will be. Um, 
but a good resource for getting some of those questions answered. And, and I wanted to say something that really stands out to me in, in, your, in your story mm -hmm. is that um, you, were, you were at this place where you weren't satisfied spiritually right. and that you started to seek. Yes. And, I, and I, I want that message to be clear to mm -hmm. folks that are watching because the Bible says, if you seek me, mm -hmm. You'll oh, find man. me Amen to that. if you search for me with all of your heart. Mm -hmm. um, that God, uh, even though he, he, you know, he pursues us a lot of times, like yeah, you know, exactly. Rosita was saying, mm -hmm. we're doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, he's pursuing us. He wants us to seek him. Mm -hmm. And so, if we're seeking for truth. Uh, he's more than willing to lead us oh, yes. to truth, mm -hmm. and, so, and and I, I I just it resonates with me because in my own walk I had that moment, okay. you know, where I was part of a, a, a you know a religious denomination that I that I give a lot of honor to, and mm -hmm. and I believe I even experienced salvation in that denomination, mm -hmm. uh, and and but but I but there was a, a, a deeper longing. There were questions yeah. that were not answered, yes. and I started to ask him mm -hmm. like um, okay what is going to happen when i die and exactly. you know what it, all these questions mm -hmm. um, and i felt him directing me to study the bible which i had never done mm -hmm. at that point in my mm -hmm. life but you know that's another show yeah. but 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 this Very whole important. this yeah. whole your your point of like i started to seek mm -hmm. i started to really i i want i want to know what truth is right yeah. and that's what i'll say to somebody who says well how do you really know that you know god exists or how and i'll say well if you really want to know lift your head up mm -hmm. and say i want to know truth and really mean that that's right yeah. Really mean that you want to know truth, not that you're playing a game. Exactly. But like, show me the truth, mm -hmm. and he and he will. Yeah, he's faithful he to will. that. Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so now you're in this place where you're answering questions. It's almost mm -hmm. kind of like the gift of counsel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you guys seem to have that as mm -hmm. you're a chaplain. Mm -hmm. um, in a, in, mm -hmm. And and can we say where you do your chaplaincy? Um, Would that be appropriate? Or we can not? just say in the health system. In the health system. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you're also giving counsel mm -hmm. and, and, and answering questions yeah. is not just, it's not just giving information, it's yes. giving counsel. Yeah, exactly. Even if some of it is knowledge, it's mm -hmm. God's word goes beyond yes, knowledge, right? Yeah. And you're exactly right, because some of the questions in the book are it's on a counseling level. Yes. Yeah. Some family problems, Yes. it, it, it touches that. Yes. I mean, it, it touches abuse. Well, one I mean, of the questions I saw in there, you know, Pastor, maybe you can elaborate, and I'm really paraphrasing it, is around how can I really receive love? Yeah, yeah. yeah that one really mm -hmm. kind of got me. Can you talk yeah. about that at all? Yeah, that was a deep one. Um, it starts really with the person. They have to really be more open to it. But th if they've been abused, they're going to be like this. But where did you where know? did you hear that question, or where did that come from? Do you remember? Yeah, if I remember right, it was a person who was abused, and they felt that why did God allow this to happen? Mm. They were in a foster care system, and the leader. Can I say this right? You can you can yeah. say you just you don't have yeah. to give names yeah. or anything. The, yeah, the the leader raped them, oh. and and I took advantage of this gentleman. And he was messed up for a long time, dealing mm. with that baggage that he had oh to carry. Oh, my. And it led, if I'm getting the story correct, because there's a lot in there, it led to bipolar dis so uh, disorder. So mental health issues. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And the person wanted to know how can he feel love, be loved. Yes. And that, the stories like that, it really touches you. Yeah. And you really want to yeah. get that right. Yeah. And then, so you want to answer the question. You want to remind them of God's love. And that they still matter. Yes. You didn't do this. That's they right. did this. An evil that's person right. did this to you, and you're not that evil person. That's right. And, um, and we live in a fallen we, world. That's yes. exactly right. Yeah. And, and, and God can change what the devil has stolen from you. Yes. And so I made sure that the person knows first that God loves them. And then I also gave them a little formula to try to help them redirect their thoughts. Yes. And that was uh, Philippians 4, 8. Yes. You know, where, you know, you start thinking on these different things. Mm. And you start doing that on a daily basis, you know. Um, like setting your... Whatever is pure. pure. Whatever is, and, and you just sit there and dwell on that yeah. and start thinking of pure things, whatever yeah. is wholesome. You start yeah. sitting there and you start yeah. dwelling on that. Instead of dwelling on the past, the stuff yes. that has harmed you, 
Replace it with what's in Philippians 4, chapter 8. Yes, and, good. and sit there and dwell on that for a long time. And it does, it will help if you do it every day mm -hmm. for more than 30 days because it's been a habit. Yes. The person has a habit of thinking negative. You want to break the habit right. and habits get broken after 25 to 30 days. Right, right. And so I told the person in the, in the answers to do that for, I think I said 30 days and, wow. and beyond. Mm -hmm. And it becomes habit. You're automatically doing it then. Mm -hmm. And, Rubita. Yes, Rubita. and so just really thinking in that kind mm. of situation, because of what happened to them, it's harder for them to receive God's yes. love. And it's, so, yeah. and if you're always thinking of the negative, it's hard to mm -hmm. see. But once you start thinking of the positive, you're open now to seeing more of God's love, seeing mm -hmm. more of God's love around them, mm -hmm. um, seeing that even in bad, that there's God's presence is still yes. there. And so mm -hmm. I believe yeah. that uh, Pastor Roscoe is just opening that door for them so that they could finally yeah. Not you know not only start to kind of put in perspective or put in line what had bad had happened mm -hmm. to them that they were being able to really open their heart to yes. receive the love you know exactly. open their heart for that goodness yeah like they have yeah. value exactly yes, and that's right? what I tried to put in the, yeah. the response so so and I, that's one of your questions I certainly mm -hmm. want to you know talk about others mm -hmm. but so you you started to feel that God was calling you to answer questions yes yeah exactly and you were doing this on the radio. Um, this part here, um, through GodQuestions.org and through Lord of Hope Ministry, okay. outside of radio. Outside of radio. Yeah. Okay. I considered having a question and answer show. I'm just not sure when we're going to do yeah. that. And I also wanted Ravita to have a counseling show. We've yes. been talking about that. <laughs> you know, I, I actually remember mm -hmm. that there was a radio show called mm -hmm. Ask the Pastor. Yes, mm -hmm. there was. And it mm -hmm. was like they would get flooded with calls. Yeah. And I don't know if it was a resource issue or what happened and yeah. you know, why the program doesn't uh, exist mm -hmm. any longer, mm -hmm. but it was it was one of the most popular it's shows. Needed. Yeah. It's really yes. needed. Yes. And so I've been thinking about it, but I figure let's start with the book first. And I wor I'm working on volume two to go to the publisher, probably December. Um, but the bottom line is people have questions and you're mm -hmm. not getting it because of time constraints in the pulpit. Yes, you know, that's right. A, the, the message is there to help get everybody mm -hmm. uh, the food that, that God has given the pastor to, to train people. but uh, there are people in the audience that does have questions. They have questions. They have and, questions. And there needs to be a platform where they can deliver it. And that's where God Questions comes mm -hmm. in. And Lord of Hope. And I'm hoping that the, the book that um, I'm working on now, in addition to this one, will make a big difference uh, in the lives of people. Yes. And so the yeah. book that we're talking about, and I, also, I know that Lord of Hope Ministries is um, showing up on the screen as well. I think it's www.lohmin.org. There it is. You can mm -hmm. see it right now. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Pastor Roscoe's book, Ask the Pastor, uh, where he has 100 questions and 20 bonus questions, and he provides answers. And so, Pastor, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about where these questions come from. Oh, sure. They come from all around the world. They get funneled through, most of them are funneled through GodQuestions.org. Okay. And, and some of them come through Lord of Hope Ministries, and they're from various countries. And there's a common uh, theme um, to people who are hungry for answers. And um, the question could be a family-related issue from a discipline issue, um, all the way up to why did God put the tree of, in the um, garden. In the garden. Okay, so There's so many did different you answer questions. that one? Yeah, that's actually right. in the book. Well, so let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Why mm -hmm. did he put the tree in the garden? <laughs> well, m my answer was he, God didn't want robots. You know, he wanted people that was going to follow him. But there also needed to be something that would test you. Okay? So I believe that God put that tree of good knowledge in the, in the garden more or less to to um, test his, his children. He said, do not eat from this because if you, if you eat from this, you will surely die. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave, you, gave mankind the warning. He gave us free will. Too. Free will. Mm -hmm. And apparently the fruit started looking really good. <laughs> and the evil one was there to nurture it along. Mm -hmm. And they ate and the fall happened. Um, but God knew that even if the fall was going to happen, he had a redemptive plan. That's right. You know, so mm -hmm. God knew mankind was going to mess up. Yeah. And he yeah. already had his plan. Yes. And so, but can you imagine if Adam and Eve did not do that? Yeah. The world would be so different. Yeah. You know, so different right now. Mm -hmm. And that world will happen again. God's yes. going to redo everything. Yeah, that's and good. And we're going to get yeah. a chance never to have to deal with 
a tree of knowledge of good That's and evil. Right. That's right. You know. Um, yeah. So. Well, and the fact that God gives man a free will. Yes. And so. That's what what that gift. tells us, because like people want to blame God, mm -hmm. right? But that the propensity to sin mm -hmm. is in us, yes. yeah. because even though Adam and Eve lived in this utopia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean they lived in perfection, yes. right? Yes. I mean they had to work, but I'm sure it's not like some of us have to work today. <laughs> <right>? I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, toil the ground. That's right. They had this utopia, but it wasn't enough. Yeah. And so they they stepped over that boundary, mm -hmm. uh, but you're right. You said you know God didn't want to create robots. Mm -hmm. He wanted us just like the two of you, right? Yeah, you love, love each other thing. because yes. you chose and to love each exactly. other, yeah. not because someone said, "Okay, Pastor Roscoe, <laughs> you will love." You know? <laughs> it's like a wind-up doll. <laughs> a wind-up doll, right? <laughs> what are some other uh, questions that? Uh, that real that stand out to you because you know okay. you talk about some common themes. But okay. what are some other questions that uh, that have come up um, that you you know that you've answered? Okay, there are so many in there. I would say sometimes if I can divert a little bit, you'll get somebody who wants to ask you questions because they're really just playing games. Mm. So in the book, there is a series of rants that somebody is sending questions to me just to argue. Okay, they okay? just want to debate the scripture. Exactly, yeah. and, and they already have their own bent on things and they were leaning more towards Islam. And um, so sometimes you'll get questions whereas the person really don't want an answer. They just mm -hmm. want to fight. They just want to debate. Right. right, so I gave the person at least four rounds and then I had to bail. Okay. On, the, on it, and that's in that's the book. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, like I see in here a pagan rant. Yeah, that's it. Three. That's one it's of like, them. Yeah. Look at that. I got right there. <laughs> you went right to the section. <laughs> right. And like trouble believing. Yes. This person is a He's, pagan and they're yes. struggling. Yes, and I, we met that gentleman, I'll say at the ministry, through Timothy's ministry, which is a ministry to the homeless. Okay. And I, I actually was a guest pastor for them, and I preached for them, I think, about five times. And, um, and I met this gentleman, he had questions, and he just mm. continued to, to write me his questions. And it started out sincere, then it just seemed like he was getting there, getting there, and then he backs off. Uh. And, and then he starts to elevate a cult over Christianity, and it's like, okay, let me keep working with him. Okay. And so that's what the rants are in the, the book. The rants are, I think that's yeah. actually kind of a <laughs> neat thing to mm -hmm. include mm -hmm. in an ask, because it, it, yeah. it's, it's kind of raw, it, right? Yeah, it, it is. is. And yeah. so the, the questions could be almost anything that's going to hit my mailbox. And so I just have to be prepared to answer it and keep in mind the custom. Like I, I got a question from China. Okay, let's and, hear that. And they wanted to know, uh, is it right to listen to God or the government? Oh, so, this is a big one. Yeah. And yeah, so what did you say? So because I know in her, this person's region, she can be persecuted if she goes against mm -hmm. the government. government. Mm -hmm. So I had to answer the question in such a way that uh, because of where she lives, I would advise that you do, the, and I listed some things, um, but I also quoted Acts 5.29, ultimately we have to obey God rather than man. Mm -hmm. But in your situation, if God is not calling you to, to step up and get persecuted, don't do it. Mm. That's you know, right. That's right. exactly right. Don't just right. do that to be a martyr. Yes. I mean, God, if God's calling you to do something, be obedient. Mm -hmm. But if God's not and you're living in a dangerous area, don't do it. That's Other right. people will do it. That's right. You that's know? right. So that's basically how I did it. But um, I added more meat to the to how I responded yeah. to it. Yeah. Did you want to add <coughs> something? <coughs> no, just, just no. I didn't add anything to that. Just kind of thinking of the fact because he does receive different questions from um, different people in different places. And um, we sometimes don't realize what, how we in the U.S. respond to things that are different in other places yes. where our responses would be different. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of things, even sometimes with the words being a little different, we consider this that, mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, um, Pastor Roscoe has to sometimes keep in mind that uh, to respond to the questions in things that are A, easily translatable, mm. because some things don't translate as well, and thinking, you know, really thinking of the culture in which they're mm -hmm. speaking yes, of, so right. they're not putting what our culture is on it, so that 
it can really because answer you're with responding them. in English, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And so the okay. words may not translate. Right, and they're switching depending. over so to make sure that it is easily translatable okay. and matching with the. And and what happens? You can tell in the how they write and formulate their questions. You can see that the language is not yes, flowing it's, quite right. 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 So, you, so so you take that into account too when you're trying to answer them. You don't use big words. You know, mm -hmm. and then you also take it, keep in mind when it shows that it's a, a, a child, someone under 18 oh. answering. Yeah, because yeah. you do have questions. You have to answer it a certain ideas. way. So, what's a question that mm -hmm. you've received from a, a younger person? Um, one more drastic would be um, the person was concerned that their mom was beating them. Okay. And um, felt like it was on the abuse side and wanted to know what they can do. Wow. You know, so. And what did you tell them? Well, I, I, at first I, I told them I don't know the, the whole story, why their mom was doing that, but um, after reading their paragraph of what they were, were saying, I said, if your mom is doing this, perhaps she's doing it because she hasn't learned or she, something happened to her when she was growing up. Mm. But I needed to have more information right, from right, the person, right. so sometimes you write back yes. to get more information. But uh, in this circumstance, the person actually had a lot of meat. They, they mm. said that they, they saw their brother getting whooped. Um, this person was uh, 18 years old now, so mm. um, she, 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 could, she was being treated differently now. Okay. She came back from a Christian retreat and saw her mom in action, and the mom gave her the evil eye, and then she stopped, and, and the, the daughter was saying, she's out of here when she gets to a certain age, mm. the son. It, it was just a mess. And so I advised them to, um, basically I, I advised them to um, see if the mom would be willing to to contact New Life Ministries, mm. okay? Because New Life Ministries have counselors, the, like the counseling center, yes. yeah, the yeah. New Life, and, right? Uh, yes. So, I, so I, I first, that's what I served up in the answer, mm -hmm. and I also tried to explain to them there are ways discipline should happen, mm -hmm. with timeouts and things yes. like that, and if none of this is happening because the girl was asking, should she tell someone? Oh. I said, yes, you, you should tell someone, close family. Right, if there's right. abuse actually going on, um, DCSF. Yeah. DCFS, you, yeah. right. So, yeah. are, so when you're getting these questions, are these, are these individuals identifying who they are? Um, once in a while they put their name. Okay. But I take the name out when yes, I answer. Yes, I was going to. Yeah, and, and so. And, and no names are in the book, by the way. I was going to ask mm -hmm. that. Like, do you have to have permission at all to um, put certain on, questions in there? Or? Only, only if you have their name. Only if you have their name. But if yeah. you take their name out, right. you mm -hmm. actually don't need to have permission. Right, because exactly. it can be anyone. Because mm -hmm. it, it could be, be anyone. There's no identifying mm -hmm. characteristics. Right. Right. Well, and, 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 and you're, you're probably careful that you, there aren't any identifying yes. characteristics. I was real careful. Like, even within the question itself. Exactly. But that's a tough one. Oh, yeah. And especially if you are a mandated reporter like mm -hmm. a pastor mm -hmm. you know it's like uh, how really having to to figure out how to how i uh, you know you deal navigate. with this in a yeah. wise way yes yeah, yeah. you uh, you also had a question in here too or somebody who said um were they a recovering alcoholic yes mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. wanted to know about how to get saved? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, are I you love those, kidding me? I love those questions. <laughs> it's like God brought that person to us wow. to save them. It's like, yes. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, tell me about that one. Yeah, um, I, I believe how I answered that one, I, I affirmed him for um, where he is in life, and then I actually led him to, in God Questions, there's a page where you would go through the process to, to reaffirm your life mm -hmm. or um, to get saved. Uh, I actually typed in there how to go about it, and in reference, you can go here as well. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, I, I tried to make sure that he understood what he was doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And because um, you want that, you want salvation to be real. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? Not just yeah. like a you know formal. I, I remember yeah. uh, uh, being at a particular ministry, and it seemed like every time there was an altar call, call the same guy would get would up every up. single mm -hmm. time. And it's like, is he thinking it's not taken? Yeah. You know, um, so I never had a chance to speak with him because that, that wasn't the church I was attending regularly right. anymore. Um, but I always wondered about him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and there are more people in the world like that. Sure. They, th some people believe once you're saved, you will never sin again. Mm -hmm. And so once you sin, then they think, oh, I must not be saved. And then they just, just keep getting yeah. in the line. Yeah. And uh, it needs to be known that you're growing. 
Right. You're right. going to make mistakes all the yes. way to the grave. Just try, try your best to walk in Christ and you'll sin less. Yes. You won't be doing the same thing over and over yes. and over and over again if yeah. you're walking by the Spirit. Yes. And mm -hmm. so. That's um, good. One of, one of yeah. the things that I like about this um, resource, you know, this is not like, um, you know, where is Noah's Ark or, mm -hmm. you know, did Jonah really get swallowed mm -hmm. up by the whale mm -hmm. or let's talk about the contradictions in scripture or something. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it, it's more like counseling type exactly. questions, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's less, you know, theological, mm -hmm. um, if I can use that word, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, like I, you know, I want to understand, you know, how far the sun is from the moon or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but but it's 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 kind of like real life yeah. Maybe uh, where they are. stuff, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that people will will ask. Right. They're not just asking like theological questions. Right. Um, they're they're you know because I was even um, looking at this one. It says, "How do I know which of God's promises are meant for me?" Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because I was reading the response posted on your website to the question, mm -hmm. "How do I know which of God's responses are or promises are meant for me?" Mm -hmm. And I really would like to know the verses that support the following statement made in the post, um, and and talks about, I guess, you know, whatever it was that you were mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. in in the post. Mm -hmm. But what an interesting yeah. question yeah. about oh, yeah. how how do I know how do I know which of because there's lots of promises exactly. in the Bible. Right. Yeah. The bottom line is um, hermeneutics. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. The law of hermeneutics. Yes. Right. Um, you have to take scripture and read it in context. Yes. And it, so many times people don't do that, and so then they run into trouble understanding yes. what God's word says. So like, do they just pull something out? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like a you know, like a rabbit out of a hat. Exactly. Or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And so that's where they run into trouble. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there was a, a newspaper article where this church service was, they had snakes. And they read the scripture verse. Oh, yeah. Saying that you won't be harmed. Right. And, well, <laughs> they went to their early grave because they were picking up the Being snakes and getting Being literal about bit. that. Yeah. yeah. And so they had, they had to realize it was for a particular point in history, a, per, a particular time that that was applicable for. And that's, unfortunately, they had to learn the hard way. Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, but the Holy Spirit, mm. you know, that third person of the Trinity, which mm -hmm. I think there's a question in your book mm -hmm. about the, the Trinity mm -hmm. too, right? Yes. But 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 um, so when you right, because when you're reading the Bible, it's not just a uh, words on a page, mm -hmm. but it has a, it's it's spiritual, right? Yes. There's a rhema exactly. word, mm -hmm. and so you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you as you're reading through it. So you can understand. What it to, means. to gain that understanding well and not said. just pull some scripture out of context, mm -hmm. because because a lot of the the cults or, or false religions do have that. done that, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Taken one scripture yes. and then built some doctrine, like some big doctrine mm -hmm. around it that mm -hmm. is totally false, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. am, am, is that correct? That is Pastor? correct. Yeah. Um, the Jehovah's Witness religion, um, there's a scripture verse in Isaiah which says, you are my witnesses. They took that as, as if God oh. was talking about them. I didn't know that. And, and it's not. Okay. You know, so that's taking it out of context. Okay. What, what does yeah. that mean in Isaiah? Are you able to talk about that? I know I'm just kind of... Uh, maybe catching you off guard. Yeah, you I, might have to go back and read it or yeah, something. Yeah, I would probably have to go back yeah, and read yeah. that, right, uh, to make sure I speak in yes, context of that. Yes, yes. But I remember that when you were saying that, that I remember reading in their li literature, they were quoting that and yes. it, as if it was th that God was talking yeah, about them. Yeah. Um, so I hope that people that are listening are hearing this, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the, the Bible is like, a, it's, a, it's, it's 66 books that tells a story from beginning to end mm -hmm. that all ties together. Yes. Written by 40 different authors, exactly. yeah. came from all different Multiple walks of continents. life mm -hmm. over what, like 1500 mm -hmm. years yes. or something? Yes. Exactly right. And they all agreed mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on about Christ. That's you right. Know, that God was coming into the world mm -hmm. um, as, as a man. And so you can't just <clears throat> pluck things out mm -hmm. of scripture. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, just to kind of affirm your, you yes. know, your point. Um, can you share one or, or two questions that um, you've gotten over the time that you've been doing this that just really kind of made you go, whoa, or um, 
uh, I don't know, and maybe it's a personal mm. uh, story or maybe it is something more theological. Okay. Because there's so many of them, right? There are. Mm. We got one where they were asking, why did God kill Uzzah? Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, because he was the one that like touched the yes. ark when right. he it wasn't supposed so to. Right, it seemed so unfair. It seemed unfair. Yeah, yes. I want you know? to know the answer to that too. <laughs> so I put that in the bonus section in the book, if I remember right. Or it's, and um, that's a, that's a good one, yeah. right? Well, well, Moses received instructions on how to go about doing that. Moses didn't follow the instructions, and so that led to the ark not being stabilized when they were moving. Mm. And so if they were to follow what God said, it wouldn't have happened. Uzzah wouldn't have been wow. put in that position. Oh, yeah. So you one know. of the consequences of not of following like, God's, of not following God's um, directions, yes. right? Taking yes. things, right, Ravita, right. into our own hands. Yes. <laughs> right, and making, yeah, and making exactly. it the way Taking we want control of yes. things. Yeah. And it like... And we're all guilty of that. We're all guilty. Course of yes. our lives. That's right. All yeah. of us, mm -hmm. all of us yeah. are guilt. Most of yeah. us are control freaks. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So, well, Pastor, what I would love for you and and uh, and really, you're both pastors in your mm -hmm. own right, mm -hmm. um, and you're a chaplain, um, and uh, you kind of gave me some 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 books here today called Wow We. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm looking forward words on women weekly experience. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to kind of reading the, uh, that myself. Um, but you know, a, as you think about. The, 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 the many people that have come across your path in ministry, both of you, whether it's through chaplaincy or whether it's pastoring mm -hmm. uh, through Lord of Hope Ministries, whether it's through um, your radio ministry, and you think about different people and their, ch you know, their, their challenges. And mm -hmm. um, I would love to you, for, for you to pray okay. um, for those who are, are listening. And for those of you who are listening, the website has come up um, a few times on our screen. We've been talking about um, Pastor Roscoe's book, Ask the Pastor, 100 Questions and Answers, plus he's, there's 20 uh, bonus questions and answers. And really a lot of these um, are, are kind of counseling questions, real life situations mm -hmm. that people are encountering and just really don't know um, what the answer is or what the Bible says about it, what does God say about it. Uh, but I would love for you to pray for folks oh, sure. that are um, that are watching um, as you feel the Spirit leads you. Sure. Yep. Ready? Yeah. Heavenly Father, you know exactly what's going on in everyone's life. You see us when we lay down and when we get up. Mm -hmm. You know the burdens people are carrying, yes. whether it's a health issue caused by an accident, caused by cancer, caused by something. You know whether or not somebody's experiencing job issues, mm. relational mm -hmm. issues, problems even in their church. You know where each and every one of us are. Lord, please meet everyone yes. where they are. Yes, Lord. Father, there's somebody who may not even know you. Mm -hmm. I pray that they're watching this for a reason. I pray that they will get hungry mm -hmm. and for your word and be mm -hmm. willing to ask the hard questions yes. mm -hmm. and find someone to be able to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. On this show, we have presented GodQuestions.org as a resource. Yes. There are over 400,000 questions answered mm -hmm. at GodQuestions.org. Mm -hmm. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, let that website be known yes. to all the Use people it, out Lord. here. Use it. May they may they get their answers, mm -hmm. Father. The, the, our the book Ask the Pastor. There's going to be a volume two coming out next year. I pray, Lord, that these books will help people. Yes, Lord. they were written to give the answers to people. I know mm -hmm. how frustrating it was for me not having answers. Yes, Lord. And then God used me. To, to try to facilitate mm -hmm. getting these answers to people. Yes. And there will be more questions. There will be more answers over the course of time. Mm -hmm. There will be other people doing this. I just pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you'll touch the listener yes. right now. Yes, Lord. Touch their heart mm -hmm. and let them feel your love. Yes, let Lord. them know that you are everlasting. You have always been. Mm -hmm. You did not have a starting point, And you have loved from day one. Mm -hmm. So I pray that they will feel your love. 
-hmm. I pray that they will reach out and love you. I pray, Lord, mm -hmm. that they will get saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, if someone's looking right now and wanting to get saved, I pray that they will call yes. someone. Yes. Reach out to Lord of Hope mm -hmm. Ministries, reach out to GodQuestions.org, mm -hmm. reach mm -hmm. out to all the different ministries out there, including mm -hmm. the local church. The local church yes. is the hope of the world. Mm -hmm. And so I pray that that hope will mm -hmm. get into the hands of the yes, people. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for this station. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the leaders of this mm -hmm. station, the mm -hmm. wonderful work that they're doing. Bless mm -hmm. them and bless their listeners. Mm -hmm. And thank you for allowing us to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And again, if there's someone out there that doesn't have answers mm -hmm. to their questions, ask away. Mm -hmm. Contact us at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. org mm -hmm. or info mm -hmm. at lordofhopeministries.com mm -hmm. is our general mailbox. Mm -hmm. Go to GodQuestions.org. Get your answers. Get mm -hmm. your answers. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for you not to be able to grow in mm -hmm. Christ. God has developed an organization mm -hmm. that can help you get it done. Mm -hmm. The answers are there mm -hmm. in text form, video, mm -hmm. and also MP3. Mm -hmm. You can have an article read to you when you go to the site. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you for allowing us mm -hmm. to be on this program presenting the options. Yes. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Yes, and I wanted to just say something, and I'm going to speak this by faith. Um, if there's someone out there that's being battered, oh, if you yes. are being battered oh. right now, I just feel to say to you, get out yes. of that situation. Um, God loves you. You have more. You you are valued by Him. You are precious to Him, mm -hmm. and perhaps even uh, reaching out to Lord of Hope yes. uh, Ministries, they might be able to direct you um, mm -hmm. somewhere uh, where you could get um, some um, some some assistance and some help and some direction, so that you don't have to stay in that battered situation. That's right. That's right. Um, thank you for watching Everlasting Love. Be still my heart and know You are God alone Stop thinking so much And just let go Be still my soul and rest Humbly I confess In my weakness Your strength is perfect For you Alone, our God, there will be no other in you. Have won my heart more than any other, so I will give it all, cause you gave it all for me. I've won my heart more than any other in 